The Lord be with you. And also with you. How good it is to welcome you to worship this morning on the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. We are working very hard to make this a service that unites us from far and wide. We have people watching today from BC. We have people watching all the way to Manitoba, north past Edmonton, south down to Texas, and of course, we have many people from Lord of All here worshiping as well. This is our first Sunday that we've had sort of a soft opening, where just a few minutes ago, actually, there was a group gathered here, just a small group, to worship together to call us into this time. And so I'm thankful that all of you have joined with us. And it seemed right that today we begin with the service which thanks God for baptism, the rite or the sacrament in our church that unites us as a family. So I invite you to join with me as we thank God for our baptisms. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took great delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as sons and daughters, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for, all, for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. Unto you, O oh God, be given all honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you were here today, I would have the, the green leaf and I'd be able to sprinkle you all. But for today, the best I can do is remind you with the green water pistol, with the reminder that we are washed clean, blessed and loved by God. Welcome to worship. Our gathering hymn for today is Here in This Place. Please join with us as we sing.
first lesson today is read from Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 13. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, And instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Please rise as we hear the gospel of our Lord for today. Matthew 13, verse 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. He was scattering the seed Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, They last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, word, making it unfruitful. 
But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times that was sown. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please join with me in the prayer of the day. Almighty Almighty God, we We thank thank you for for planting planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. While we are not able to share the peace of Christ in a handshake or a hug, we can always offer in a word or thought, a prayer for one another, Christ's peace. So tonight, today, this morning, whatever time we're at, please extend Christ's peace to one another in this coming week as a sign of blessing. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Boy, I am missing all of you. Some of you may have got kids packs already. There are others coming out this week. So all of you should have something from the church in the next few days to help you know just how much you're missed. But I also want you to know how much I enjoy spending time with you each week. You've been listening to the verses that Joe read and Wayne read Did you notice that there seems to be a lot of talk about planting and seeds? About two weeks ago, some ladies from the church came in and gave me this beautiful plant. It's an azalea. And I love it because it's bright and it's doing well in my office. But it reminds me about when God plants a seed. Something beautiful can grow and make life good. You know, the idea of planting a seed goes far beyond plants in a pot. God also plants some other seeds. They are seeds of his love, of his forgiveness, of his hope or plan for us, and he plants them deep inside of us. And when we take care of those seeds by listening to God or reading our Bibles, by praying, by doing the things that God wants us to do, something beautiful for the whole world starts to grow. Did you know that you have a very special beauty for the whole world? And when you treat other people with respect and kindness, when you listen to your mom and dad or big sisters and brothers, when you try to do the things that you know are what God would want you to do, then it's like a beautiful flower blooming. If you've been outside lately, and I hope you have because we've had some nice days, you've seen lots of beautiful flowers blooming. Or perhaps, maybe you have flowers on your table at home. Maybe you've even been helping mom and dad with the gardening. Every time you see something growing, something beautiful, remember how God has planted seeds in each of you, and then go out and shine for Jesus. Let his seeds grow into something wonderful in how you live your life, in how you honor him, in how you share his good news in all the world. So while we pray, 
Just take a look at the beauty of that azalea plant. Dear God, thank you for creation. Thank you for the plants, the trees, the grass. Thank you for everything you have made that reminds us of your love, that reminds us you are with us. Help us as your children to take care of all that you have made so that other people in the world may come to, to know you through those things. Lord, make us always thankful to be your children. Amen. Now have a great week. Go out and show other people what God's love looks like. Stay safe. Listen to your moms and dads. And have a great summer. Amen. We join together to sing the sermon hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, as we think of all that God has created for us. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, who created us with a plan, who now journeys alongside of us to guide us and to bring that plan to fruition. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of your hearts be acceptable in the sight of our God, now and forever. Amen. You heard a parable today. We know the meaning of the parable of the sower that Jesus shared because not only do we hear the parable, but when the disciples say, Jesus, what does it mean? He explains it. But as I read it this week, I somehow felt that there had to be something more in that passage as a message or a lesson for those listening that day, especially for the disciples. They had learned a lot about Jesus already. They understood about Jesus and God's word being planted in them. So I wondered if maybe Jesus had another message. Something caught my ear as I read it, and I want to share that with you this morning. To make sense of it, though, I need to take you back a bit. 
Do you remember when Jesus first met the disciples? Do you remember the setting where they were? He met quite a number of them by the lake shore. And he stood back and he watched as they fished. They were accomplished fishermen. And so even though we don't have much of a record of Jesus as a fisherman, as he watched them, he then approached them and he said to them, if you follow me, I will make you to be fishermen. But not fishermen of fish. He would make them fishers of people. In today's gospel, something similar happens. But it's a call to a different career. It's almost as if Jesus is saying to them, so, you want to be a farmer? Let me help you with that. Verses 3 and 4 in the passage, and Jesus' words put an image in my mind when Jesus said, a farmer went out to sow his seed. He was scattering his seed. Now, I wondered if farming back then was like farming today, because you and I have both seen the fields of our farms. They seem to be quite carefully marked out. Each field has its own specific seeds planted in an orderly fashion, and there is much effort put into preparing the soil selecting just the right type of seed for the right place, according to the conditions. So for a farmer to just go out and scatter seeds in a field, to me, well, he wouldn't just scatter it so it went all over the place. I mean, think about it for a minute. Can you imagine Glenn or Mike or Ron or Doug or any of the farmers you know, just walking along the side of the road and just willy-nilly scattering seeds in the middle of a field full of weeds and thistles or onto the rock? Well, I've come to know the farmers in our midst pretty well, and I am pretty sure that that is not how it is done. So I wanted to understand farming in Jesus' time. Maybe that's what they did. Well, this is what I learned. Farming in Jesus' time was an honorable source of income and lifestyle. It was something taken very seriously. Owning land was seen as a secure way to earn a living, to care for one's family. <coughs> Farmers were very religious. And they prayed and they sacrificed some to God, others to the God of the harvest, also called Mars. In order to have success of great crops for the year and provisions for the family, they as farmers did their job carefully and well, and they dedicated it to God. Now, I wondered what farmers grew. Back then, they grew quite a variety of crops. Some focused on grapes or olives. Those two crops grow well together, and they are treated or used in similar ways. The two crops were sold for much money, so they were not a crop that a farmer would grow to feed his family. Other farmers focused on things like cabbages, onions, carrots, cucumber, parsnips, radishes, celery. Some even had orchards. Some of the farmers planted grains. Their farms, it appears, were well organized. They were eager to have technology to water the crops. So, about Jesus' time, they had aqueducts that they had dug in so the water would flow. They developed new implements to make sowing and harvest easier and more effective. In fact, 
Ultimately, agriculture was the largest industry in ancient Rome. And it was orderly, and it was structured. Are you wondering why you're getting a lesson in historical farming 101 in worship this morning? Well, this is what captured my attention. A farmer just scattering his seed? If the farmers back then, like the farmers of today, take great care of their land and their practices to grow a high quality, high volume crop, what is Jesus saying? He goes on in the parable to talk about scattering seed in places that fairly would, clearly wouldn't have made much sense to farmers, let alone to us. I mean, can you picture a farmer taking seed and scattering it in rocky ground? Who would scatter good seed among a pile of rocks? Or among a place where the birds would just swoop in and take it? You'd never put a bunch of seed, good seed, among the thorns. Yet some seed, it seemed, almost by accident, came to grow out of that land. Good seed. Now, Jesus never spoke without reason, so why would he be talking about scattering seed? Such an odd understanding. After much reading, I would propose that, first off, for us today and for the twelve, it is a reminder that the original farmer, God, was willing to take some chances when he scattered his word. He took the chance and he scattered it into us. And to God's view, we were worth the risk. Some of us could well have been rocky soil. Soil that when God's seed was planted within us, the world would still destroy it. It wouldn't have a chance to take root. And some might have been in the midst of weeds. We have all found ourselves in places where we know God's word and seed would have been challenged to grow because of bad influences. Of course, some might have just fallen on the ground among the path and been picked up by others or perhaps just stepped on and lost, as people sometimes are. But because our God was willing to scatter seed, to take the risk, some of that seed landed on each and every one of us. And look at what has happened. God's word has begun to grow and to mature, and we ourselves have been filled with it. And now we become the farmers that God is talking about. Now you and I hold that seed, the seed of God, in our hands. What will we do with it? It now becomes up to us. How will we sow that seed? What will we grow with the seed? Well, if we were to follow the way of the world and the traditions of farming as we understand them, we would spend our time trying to make everything perfect for the word of God to be shared. In fact, we would spend so much time trying to build up the perfect feed, field to make sure that everything was just right. So right so everyone would want to get to hear it, the sound system having the best of sound, the shape of the baptismal font perfect to bless the water, the colors to be aesthetically perfect. If we got so caught up in those details, we may never get around to scattering God's seed at all. But as Jesus calls out, if we are to be farmers alongside of him, each one of us that have already received that seed must, like God, be willing to take chances to scatter and sow the seed in places where, of our own accord, we might think it would never grow. 
just like God, took a chance. And he placed it in each and every one of us. Now it is our turn, if we're going to have farmers' hearts, just like Jesus, to scatter that seed, to go into places and fields that we may not think would be places of God, but places where God may enable that seed to grow and do amazing things. You know that person you had the altercation with over something and you thought, that person will never understand faith. Did you perhaps by-step the opportunity to spread some seed there? Or what about the person who just seems to be having a rough time? And you think, maybe another day, maybe not right now, I won't bother them. Except at this moment, they might be in a vulnerable enough place to hear the word of God, to let it change them and grow. Or what about that person who seems to mock your faith? Or the one that even professes to be an atheist and says, not for me. What if you scattered the seed of Christ to them? The farmer that Jesus is speaking of, likely his disciples or even you and I, we are called to go and scatter the seed. We are called to be brave enough to scatter the seed in all sorts of places so that hearts of all sorts will have opportunity to receive it and hear it. We are called to give that seed a chance to grow within all sorts of people. And in the end, that will allow many to become farmers in his name. The hymn of the day that was chosen that we are singing today is called, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Now that simple phrase actually can have two meanings. Firstly, it can be that we prepare our hearts to be good and ready to receive the seed, to allow it to grow. And that's kind of the sense we get as we sing the song. The second meaning is that we must have hearts that are set to be like Jesus, to sow the seed as he has. Once upon a long time ago, I was a nurse in the children's intensive care unit. And I can remember clearly one day my head nurse, Nelda Harker, telling me, you have the heart of a nurse because she told me that she saw in me a love for those I was called to care for. She said, you do it to the best of your ability. Today, that would be my encouragement to each of you, to have the heart of good soil, the heart of a farmer taken from Jesus' example to be willing to go out and do our best to love all those who we encounter, enough to want to scatter and sow the seeds of Christ in each and every one of them, to enable those seeds to grow in people that might in no other way ever know of the love of God. I'll be honest, sometimes it will mean taking chances. Sometimes it will mean scattering them in places that we question, we wonder about, we would prefer not even to be. But just as farmers know they do their best, but what grows is at the will of things they can't control, like the weather, like the conditions and the quality of the seed and the nutrition of the dirt. We, too, do our best to get that seed out there, to plant it well and deep in the hearts by our actions and words. What grows in the hearts of each person, the conditions of their day and their will, will be up to them and God. But our job 
our role as people with good seed in our hearts is to take that seed, to scatter it in Jesus' name. So today we pray from the parable, may our hearts be good soil. May we be willing. May we be eager. May we work together with Christ to scatter the seed of God everywhere, allowing it to grow as it can, as it will, according to God's plan in the hearts of others. So, you want to be a farmer? Great. Let's rise. Let's go. Let's take the risk and do it as Christ's farmers. Amen. We join together to sing, Lord, let my heart be good soil. join me today in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we share our offering today, let us consider all that we are blessed enough to have. We recognize that God has shown us incredible generosity and compassion. I invite you to take a few moments to take stock of all you have and to consider in your hearts how and what you are able to share to further the ministry of Christ to the world. Please pray with me. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving 
what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's people, we are called to love one another. Let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. God, we thank you for the seeds you plant in our hearts and minds, seeds of faith and trust, seeds of hope and peace. As those seeds grow within us, may we take up the task of sharing them by helping plant them into the hearts of others. We think of how many people are working today to care for and protect, to build up and show your compassion and involvement in our world and in our lives. We lift up pastors, our first responders, those who serve us and those who teach us. May your light shine through each of them so that we may grow stronger and feel confident to join in with them in being good stewards of all you have created. We recognize there are many challenges and struggles in our world today. Be the strength of your people that we might stand up firmly to those challenges and hold firmly to our faith, knowing that as we walk with you, you will see us through them. We pray for our children. May they be blessed by their new Bibles and by the simple faith that is already growing within them. Lord, help us to find ways to stay connected with them as we miss their joy and laughter. We pray for those who are shut in and may feel forgotten. There are many we haven't seen recently and are in our thoughts and minds. Help all who call Lord of all home to know their church family are missing them and longing to be reunited back into your presence as soon as possible. We lift up those we are concerned for. We pray for many today who so need you to give them comfort and strength to be a foundation in the challenges in their lives. We lift up, lift up Terry, Ed and Lois, Bobby and Rob, Bob and Pat, Jim, Liam, Lily, Doug, Jean, Joel, and the Blakeney family, Susan, Wayne, and Ev, Linda May, the Beltons, and all others that we name before you today. We uphold those who are worrying or grieving, the Westgard family, the Min Chow and Dajni families, Sandra and Tony. We pray for your presence with all who are celebrating special dates and events in their lives this coming week. Mike, Bob, Ben and Graydon, the Stensrudes and the Dix. Hear us now as we take a few moments to offer the prayers for ourselves and the things on our hearts. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. We have been called. We have been anointed. We have been given a task. And so we go out from this time of worship into the mission field that is the world. We go carrying the good news to the world, news about freedom and healing, about Christ's love and promises. The time of the Lord's favor is now. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each and every one of you with favor and grant you his never-ending peace. All this and praise be to our God forever. Amen. Well, look at how many of you are out there today. You know, it's really kind of cool because this is the part of the service I hear the most about. It must take us back to our childhood. Romper, bomper, stomper, do. God, you teach us to be true. As we serve and show our love, help us to know you watch over from above. Who's out there today? Hey, there's Bernice and John, and Dale and Betty, Ev and Wayne, so glad you got good news this week, Sharon, Susan, Mike, Tanya and Hunter, Fran, Donna, Jean, Glenn and Betty Ann, Claire, Brian, Marv, Ruth Ann, Andrew and Tamara, Matt and Mary, Ken and Eileen, Mary Ann and Henry, Marg and Jacob, Marika and Luke and Jake and Suzanne. It is always so good to see you out there, to know you join with us. You are loved missed members of the family. Please stay safe and have a good week. I remind you that we are starting with soft openings, so next week we will be opening again. If you would like to come, it is a small group typically, please call into the office Monday, Tuesday. Let Linda know that you'd like to be coming we're trying to keep our numbers down around 20 to 30. That gives us just a bit of pre-awareness as to who will be here because we do need to keep track for Alberta Health Services. It just helps us to make sure things run smoothly when everyone gathers. Our sending song for today is, You Are the Seed. Please join with us to sing and have a great week. Thanks be to God. Sorry.
하나님 